Now the resources that I've assigned to my task are not working for free. I have to enter in a cost for these resources, and if you do too, then let's go ahead and enter the cost form by coming over here and changing views by right-clicking on the view bar and going to the resource sheet view. As you recall in an earlier training video, this is where we entered in the resources and also where we're going to assign cost to them. And the three different types of resources that we'll be assigning cost to are the work, materials, and cost. So let's come over here to the standard rate column and assign a cost or standard rate for Rider 1. Type in 10. There you go, $10 an hour. Rider 2, 15 an hour. Editor will be. Now, up until this point, I've only entered in hourly rates. If you have a weekly, monthly, or yearly rate, then just go ahead and do the following. Just type in the uh, amount and then do a forward slash and then type in WK for weekly, MO for monthly, or YR for yearly. And then go ahead and hit enter and there you go. Now if you can't see the cell here, the contents therein, you can either hover over it, it gives you a pop-up, or when you select it, you can see it up here in the entry bar, which if you don't have it, as you recall in an earlier training video, you can come up here, click on the file tab, go to options, select the display category and check entry bar, okay. Or you can come up here, hover over to the right hand side of the column header, standard rate, until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions, you can click and drag to stretch it out or if you want it just right, and do a best fit to the longest data within the column, that cell here, then you can go ahead and double click really fast, or if you're not good at double clicking really fast, you can right click on the column header, go down to field settings, and then choose best fit, and that works, okay? All right, for the glossy paper, it's in bundles or reams, and how many sheets of paper in a ream? Well, 500, and for one ream, that's what we're entering the cost in for, could be, let's see, 25, and then maybe for plain paper, it's a little bit less, 20, and then for the printer, $500. Now, you want to be careful, because if you assign the printer to more than one task, you're going to be adding, for each task you assign it to, $500. If you don't mean to do that, but you want to be able to share the printer and assign it to all the tasks, then probably the best thing to do is to assign the cost to one, printer one, and then add a bunch of other printers here, but with no cost assigned to them. So you can say, hey, we're all sharing the same printer, but it's just a one-time cost for the uh, printer here. In fact, that brings up a good point. We do have the cost use uh, field over here that we'll cover in a later training video, a one-time cost for the use of it. In any case, the last thing we got here is travel expenses. Now, I cannot type in any numbers in the travel expenses rate field. And the reason why is because it's subjective. In other words, when I assign this to task five to travel out of state, I can have a cost for that, and if I go to task 7, and I have to travel again, that could be a different cost. So the costs are variable, so what you need to do is go ahead and assign the uh, resource to whatever tasks that have travel expenses, and then you can actually go into that resource that's assigned to it separately for each task and assign a cost to it, because again, one cost doesn't fit all. It could be for one task just in gas, it could be for the next task that we assign travel expenses, it could be for food only or air flight, I mean it's a variable. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go over here and change views and go to the Gantt chart view. Let me right click on the uh, view bar, come up here, Gantt chart. Every now and then it'll do this to me where I can't see the table. It just kind of freaks out here. It may not do it to you, but it does it to me. Let me be sure to save my work and then it's just best to close out. And then let me go ahead and double click to reopen it back up. And then because I'm using Windows 7, once it's open, I can right click on the corresponding button for the window that's open down below and get a jump list. And the most recent one that I've been uh, using or that I have pinned in the jump list is the software training manual. In other words, I just closed it, reopened it back up, and it refreshed it. So I can now see the entry table. In any case, hey, something new that I'm learning here, at least the uh, bug that I might have in my project. In any case, once you bring it back up and it's refreshed and you can now see the entry table, let's go ahead and go to task 8 and let's say that both the writer and the project manager are traveling together out of town to be able to, well, meet up at some place to review this with the uh, subject matter expert. So to assign a travel cost to this, as you recall, when it comes to assigning resources to a task, you can do it the simplest way, which is come up here, click on the resource tab, go to the assignments group, click on assign resources, and scroll down to find our travel expenses and you can assign it that way and then once you do well notice now that we have cost for our resources 
they'll now show up over here that at 100% at $10 an hour, that's 8 hours, so 8 times 10 is 80 bucks. So there's the cost already configured for Rider 1. But for the travel expenses, again, this is just per task. So once we assign it, we can come back in here and type in a cost, and then hit Enter, click Close, and you can see over here, for travel expenses, it's $1,200. It won't show that expense for all the other resources or work resources that have been assigned, just the cost resources that you'll be able to see that cost over here in the Gantt chart, okay? Now you can go ahead and do it that way, or you can go ahead and double click on the task and come up here, click on resources, and we've got travel expenses right there. If it's not 1200, well, you know, we can change it or add it there. Hit enter and click OK, updates to 1100, or another way to do it, is to come over here and we can change views and right click on the view bar and go to the uh, resource usage view. Now I'm going to hit two birds with one stone. I'm going to show you a different view that I think that will be helpful and also how you can do it in that view. In other words, change the travel cost that's been assigned to that resource. So in the resource usage view, see if this makes sense, it has a list of all the resources, Rider 1, Rider 2, and so on, and it shows whether or not that they're being used. Now those resources that haven't been assigned to a task or unassigned tasks here are all listed there and those resources that are assigned to a task have the task listed below that resource. Kind of cool. A different way to look at things or to have them organized. So for Rider 1, he's assigned to these resources and you can go ahead and scroll down and see the admin assistants assigned to that one, project managers assigned to that one. And so quickly, instead of focusing on the task, you can go over to the resource usage for the resource and their usage. See if that helps stick in your brain to find out if they're being used or not and what tasks they're assigned to. Because, well, you can do it in the Gantt chart. Let's right click and go to the Gantt chart and look over here and go, let's see, Rider 1, Rider 1, Rider 1, maybe Rider 1's down here, you know, not as uh, clearly spelled out as when you go to right click, resource usage. Hey, it's all right there, grouped under one resource, all the tasks that they're assigned to, okay? So having said that, remember we do have the travel expense. Let's scroll down here, the resource. And right now we just have the travel expense for review a subject matter expert. Double click on that. And you can come over here and change the cost there as well. So there's more than one way to skin a rabbit. So we can say it's 1500. And then click okie dokie. So if we double click 1500, click OK. If we right click, go back to the Gantt chart, $1500 it shows there as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.